emails back in the day. Okay, so we just, um, just wrapped up the expectations for the summaries, went through Solomon, defined N, F, lambda, and T, and kind of even took a little trip through the universe on the entropy bus. But um, the next thing that, that's going to be uh, due down here somewhere is exam one. So, that, so the next thing to focus on after you finish summary one is exam one, and exam one will cover chapters one through three. And I know we, we started digging into chapter one. Let's just see if we can't wrap it up today. And I have my chapters all in order now too, so here we go, boil chapter one. And we defined force last time, we defined work, we defined energy, we defined power. Uh, we looked a little bit at what the definition of sustainable energy is. I'm not gonna cover powers of 10, we've, we've done that already. And we also defined force, I'm not gonna go through that again either. Um, we went to the first law cannot create or destroy energy. We even talked a little bit about second law, which means entropy increases. By now you know what kinetic is, gravitational, electrical, and nuclear. There's your equation for kinetic, one half mv squared. Your equation for height is energy is mgh. Um, electrical energy, we usually just think of power. Power is is volts times current. Nuclear, that's your E equals MC squared. We covered that in 101. We also defined efficiency and we, we noted that efficiency could be defined as either power out over power in or energy out over energy. So you could look at either instantaneous efficiency or average efficiency. So in the case of power it's instantaneous, in the case of energy it's, it's sort of average over time. Now, yeah, we also defined the efficiency of a heat engine, stating that the efficiency is always the operating temperature minus the ambient temperature divided by the operating. And I think what we got to last time, we sort of stopped at the point of capacity factor. Now, we used to have a wind turbine sitting over in Hellgate Canyon. We still have it. We're going to put it up at the Kettle House Brewery in the Blackfoot. Um, Missoula being in the valley that we are is notoriously unwindy. You know, we'll get a storm now and then. But the capacity factor is, is more or less the, the fraction of time, if you will, or the percentage of time that a given technology is act, acting at full capacity. So the wind turbine in Hellgate Canyon was rated for 10 kilowatts. It could actually pump, you know, it could turn kinetic energy into electrical energy at a rate of 10 kilowatts. It's about 10, 10 houses, 10 homes uh, for electricity, but it had a capacity of about 10%, which means that on average, it could run about one house. Now, that's one house's electricity. Typical homes, at least at this latitude, consume about four to five times the thermal energy that they do electrical energy. Um, if you're all electric, it means that you're spending four to five times the energy heating that you are flipping on the lights, running the fridge, running the dishwasher, et cetera. So that's not a, you know, think in those, in those terms, capacity factors. So that 10 kilowatt turbine, Brian Kearns was talking about before, was taking data for a number of years while it was up. And we, again, it was down around 10%. This particular one said, well, if, it, if it's doing better, you might be up around 34%. Um, one of our graduates, Ryan Carson, works up at Judith Gap, and um, they're sometimes over 100%, if you can believe it. Because every, every technology is sort of rated to run at a certain speed. If you really had to, you could run <laughs> 
You could run a lot faster than you, your normal metabolism. Like, okay, I just exerted 110%. Well, yeah, because I was, you know, running away from the, the, the bear or the bad guy or, or whatever. Um, Carson actually said that sometimes they'll, they'll be running so heavy that um, they'll have more electricity than the grid can actually absorb. When we get into the economics, we'll talk about that. Utility still has to pay them for it, even if they aren't using it. It's part of what's called a power purchase agreement. Do they have to ground the excess energy? They'll, um, a lot of times they'll, they'll just feather the blades. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, won't, it will not make it onto the grid because it's just, it's just too much. Okay, uh, primary energy, that's what is in nature. This is another paper, Shramsky, that we'll read to talk about, and, that's, and we'll also look at this a little bit in summary three, where we look at the days to the end of oil, days to the end of gas, days to the end of coal, et cetera. Primary energy, that's that. Also, days to the end of nuclear, when we sort of used up the Earth's chemical battery, as you will. Delivered energy, that's what's you know flowing through our gadgets. And then useful is sort of what uh, makes it into our minds and brains. So we could walk out of the room right now, leave that projector running. It's delivered, but it's not useful. It's just projector running in the room and nobody using it. Okay. So here's the here's the contributions. This, you know, this is a, a little bit dated. It's 2009. And so they broke it out by uh, fossil fuels, which you can see at that point are the lion's share. You can go to world o world -O meters right now and get a snapshot of what this looks like right now. But these are the main categories. That's, that's the uh, whole point of this exercise. And this is global. Um, I've sat through a lot of meetings with Northwestern Energy right now. They bought the dams. We have a tremendously high profile of hydro. It's 20, 30, as much as 40 percent, uh, depending on the time of day. That 500 exajoules is a good number to keep in mind. That's the total global energy budget. When you divide 500 exajoules by 7 billion people, you get 200 megajoules per person. Each one of us consume about 200 megajoules per person in primary energy per day, which is 10 times our metabolic needs. So we consume 10 megajoules of food and 200 megajoules of primary. That's the average human, average North American is at 1,200, six times the global average. And so that's your energy. Wattage, so um, each one of us runs at about 100 watts, but we consume energy 20 times faster technologically than we do metabolically. So you multiply 7 billion people by, let's see, what's 100 times 20, um, 2,000. So 2,000 watts per person times 7 billion people is 16 terawatts. Yes? So this problem set that we have to do this week, does it do... There's no problems that do this week. Well, no, I thought the one met, uh, technological metabolic would do this week. Summary one is, is due. Uh, your bio sketch is due today, and summary one is due next week. Problem set isn't due to next week, the first problem set. Uh, yeah. Oh, and that's... Check the syllabus. Okay. Yeah, check the syllabus. All right. Something to do every week before Tuesday. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so this is this is breaking out, and so that so what we just looked at was total energy uh, across all all primary energies. This is these are the renewables. So we just took that one little slice of the renewable pie, expanded it. Traditional biomass. Um, another another ratio to keep in mind is it's a um, it's a four to one ratio so we as a global civilization are, are breaking carbon bonds or breaking biomass carbon bonds about one quarter of the rate at which nature is building them um, and so this when you look at the traditional biomass 
and the new biomass. These are, so chemical, chemical, yeah, chemical, electromechanical, electrothermal, electromechanical. So chemical, 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 electromechanical. So you're taking mechanical energy, converting in, into electrical. Uh, geothermal, you're taking thermal and turning it into electric, not unlike a combustion engine, except nothing's on fire. It's just you have a hot, something hot on the ground, something cold above ground. And then this is obviously mechanical, which you might argue, well, wind, wind energy comes from thermal gradients, which comes from the sun. Wave energy comes from, mm -hmm. well, tit <laughs> tidal. Tidal comes from the moon. Um, wave, wave, yeah, wave energy also comes from the wind, which comes from thermal, thermal gradients, which comes from the sun. And then your tidal uh, comes from solar and, and lunar gravitational, which you could also think of as mechanical because the um, planet is as the planet moves. So there's your 30 exajoules, you know, so, you know, divide the 500 by the 30, that's the fraction of which comes from traditional biomass, wood straw, dung, mainly developing countries. There's hydro, which talked about that. This, this is something to, you know, to, to keep in mind um, as, as our energy grid becomes more uh, distributed. You know, one, one thought that's frequently crossed my mind, and I, I've spent a little bit of time in coal strip, not, but not enough to know, there's so much heat coming off of those stacks, it's, I just, a better use of that would be to, you know, keep the sidewalks from melting, keep the streets from getting snow, just like pump that heat underground before just sending it up in the atmosphere. You know, use, use that heat first in the same way that you might have a more efficient stove with a, you know, convoluted pipe system through your house where you're, you know, not sending as much of that heat straight in the atmosphere, but, you know, use it for something uh, prior to um, so-called, you know, wasting it. Because distributing heat in the atmosphere increases the entropy of Earth's systems via like, inducing climate change. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, I talked a little bit about delivered energy. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, so here's, here's some... Um, projections and I I mentioned Amory Lovins in 101 we talked about Hubert's peak this is the um, you know this is the prediction so oil being a, you know a big contributor to the world's energy budget these are some predictions of what the uh, future of oil might look like unconventional oil that's your um, that's your tar sands things like that, that that aren't just you know nice juicy pockets uh, natural gas liquids, you know, as as predicted, they are becoming, you know, a, a greater co contributor. Crude oil, maybe they're out there. We'll see. That's what these guys are, you know, drilling up in the Arctic for, and that's why Russia put its flag uh, under the uh, Arctic ice cap to say this is this is our oil, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is the oil we know that's there, um, but not economic, right? That's the guy out in the box and says, gosh, I'd, I'd love to drill this, but I can't really afford to because the price of oil is too low. Yeah. Um, I just recently learned that in the Paris Agreement for like the carbon, um, we were involved in that, right? Like oh, yeah. The United States mm -hmm. were involved? Yeah. When that agreement supposedly 80% of what we've already discovered in oil deposits has to be left in the ground. That's part of the agreement. Hmm. Yeah. 80%. Yeah. So... Well, yeah, and in my opinion, that's energy security right there. That's yeah, your that seventh too. generation. Is just leave, leave it there for later. Well, there's no governing body to enforce that, though. Right. So really? CP21 has no teeth. Right. right. Mm. I mean, sure, we can say we're going to do it. And back out. Yeah. The, only, uh, <laughs> the only option for the rest of the world to try to pressure us into doing that is to sanction the United States if they don't follow 
all of the We shouldn't be able to do overseas drilling, yeah. I think. <laughs> we shouldn't be doing any overseas drilling, right? Yeah. Actually, I would just not care about it. Well, like sort of the main mechanism that was proposed, which won't get us all the way, will get us part of the way to our agreements was a clean power plant, but that was like stuck in the courts and who knows what will happen with that. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll probably go to the Supreme Court at some point, go to the Supreme Court and yeah, some big, big, big ifs out there. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the point is, like, you know, here we are in the present, and we we can we can see the past and the future at the same time. Not, uh, not many previous, you know, civilizations could, could could do that. And the book is relatively UK centric, as as you know, uh, the authors are are uh, in the UK, and so and. If, if you go pick up a copy of, of Lovin's Reinventing Fire, you'll see that he breaks it out. These are very common ways to break out the various energy sector. And you know, they do it, it's you know, fairly straightforward. You do it by solids, liquids, gases, and electricity. Kind of need to think about those different phases of matter. And then by the different sectors, you know, what do you use in the house? What do you use to um, transport, move things around? Uh, services, that's, you know, your, your, your banks and, and things like that. Industry, that's where things are manufactured. And uh, by end use, so cooking water, space heating, um, here's your cooking sector, here's transport. Uh, lights, as I mentioned before, you know, relative, you know, you think about it a lot because they're on, but, you know, relatively small and then machinery, um, even less so. And this is in petajoules, so right there we're looking at uh, six exajoules. Um, yes. Question the sure. So when it shows the segment that is like representing transport or cooking, right. So it's just that percentage within the petajoule. So you'd say it's really three thousand two, little bit five. It, it is. That's how you get it, or is it like from zero to where? It's it's, at? it's just this chunk. So okay, it, it's so just this chunk. Stacked. They're 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 stacked. Yeah. Yeah. There's no there's no overlap there. You can I think see. of this. This is yeah. zero, which is you know twenty. Oh, it's like twenty five hundred yeah, out to exactly. almost five house. You know almost almost twenty five hundred total. Yeah. So then you just go from where it starts to where it ends and just. Yeah, you can think of like, you know, stacking quarters or stacking coins. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you. yeah. Okay. Um, this is kind of right back to the Solomon paper we are talking about. We've looked at the spectra of various greenhouse gases. Also talked about the fact that if there were no atmosphere, it would be very cold. So we, we, we need a warm atmosphere. is looking at um, really the, the growth of renewables um, in the UK. So it's, it's hard not to look at this uh, graph and, you know, if, if you were an economist, you know, where, where's the money going to be? Where are the jobs going to be? You look at this, well, it's, it's growing, we'll have, we'll have more of this in the future. Um, <clears throat> CO2 emissions. Starting in 1850, again, we'll, re we'll revisit that in summary three. You know, I think it's, it's at this point well above 35 billion tons per year, each, you know, each, with each one of those fossil fuels being a contributor. And I wish I could, there's a specific name for this curve, but this is just showing the um, temperature changes o over time. There are, you know, fluctuations due, due to a large number of events, but based on our greenhouse gas emissions, it appears as if we are the, you know, primary contributor to this. Um, 1.4 talks about uh, the renewables. So this 1.4 kind of almost walks you through the chapter. So we'll, we'll get into solar thermal, looking at the total budget, you know, where the energy flows from the sun to the various sectors. We already mentioned that wind and waves are a, a direct effect from the heat. You don't think about it, but so is hydro from all of the evaporation. There's your indirect biofuels too, obviously. The sun is photosynthesizing those carbon bonds in bioenergy. That's, that's going to be chapter four. Um, 
non-solar, so tidal, we said it's coming from gravity. Geothermal uh, is from a lot of different things, so early collisions when the Earth was being formed. Some people think some of it comes from friction left over from earthquakes. And then um, it's a few, you know, talking about the directives. We just mentioned the uh, Paris meeting, the UK's action plan from 2010. These things change all the time, but you can tell that we have been thinking about this for quite some time. And, you know, again, sort of breaking it out by sector, you know, what are these going to look like as we move to electric cars, you know, et cetera. So. That's it. I will see you all uh, Thursday. So start um, start writing up those summary ones. And if, and if you want to put your summary one out for peer review before it's due, that's fine too. But nothing perfect. Just you know, throw some ideas around there. So we'll start in on chapter two on Thursday. Thank you. Hey guys. Yeah, you too, Daniel. Thank you.